Hi! So, this is the sixth video about creating a chatbot end-to-end -end on the example of a CityQuest bot. So, we briefly reviewed the stages of getting an idea, preparing the contents, choosing architecture, and started to build the conversation flow for our CityQuest chatbot in ChatFuel. We created the basic flow for one question. But we would like to make our bot a bit more sophisticated. So, in this video, on top of what we've already done, we will add more functionality in ChatFuel, which will allow a user first to get hints, then to get to ask for an answer, and also we will limit the time for solving each question. We will also add a persistent menu to our bot. In the next video, we will add some logic on the webhooks. Let's start from the hints. First of all, we should have them the hints themselves. For our question about the city tower, we have two hints. The first is an engineering fact about that it's a quite a big object, but its center of mass is located underground. And the second is based uh, on the information from Wikipedia, which says that towers built according to the same project are located in several other Ukrainian cities, including Lviv, Donetsk, Ivano-Frankivsk, Chernivtsi and others. So let's create three blocks. Q1 location hint 1, Q1 lock hint 1, Q1 lock hint 2 and Q1 hints penalty. In Q1 location hint 1 we will add typing hint 1 typing This is a big object but its center of mass is located underground and we will add a re redirect to Q1 hints panel penalty block. In Q1 location hint 2 we will add typing hint 2 typing text that objects built according to the same project allocated in several other Ukrainian cities and final redirect to Q1 hints penalty block. In Q1, Q1 hints penalty, uh, so far we will add just a redirect to, to block Q1 task. So far our bot was quite simple and straightforward. Now we will add some complexity. Uh, we will need a number of uh, variables for storing user's total score, user's score in each task, time devoted for the tasks, penalty score, flags for whether hints and answers were shown and other stuff. We will also need to reset all these values to be able to pass the quest repetitively. So we will create a group called Quest General and add the first block, which we will call Reset Attributes. And there we will set the next attributes. Some of them I will comment later. So user score. This is total user score and we will set it to zero. Penalty. This is penalty for a hint and also for a every wrong try or answer. We will set it to five. Last Q number the number of the last question shown. We will set it to zero. Q1 sco score. The score for the first question. We will set it to zero. Q1 answer. This is the answer to the first question. Number 10. Time for Q1 in minutes. 
This is time in minutes devoted for the first question. 20. Q1 hint shown. This is a flag showing if the first hint to question 1 was shown, we will set it to 0. Q1 hint to shown 0. Q1 A answer shown. This is a flag that shows if the answer for Q question 1 was shown. 0. And Q1 force A. This is a flag which uh, shows if user opened the, quest the answer to question uh, 1 preliminary or forced opened. 0. We, will, we need to update existing blocks with using some of these attributes. So now let's return to Q1 location qu question, Q1 log Q, and set attribute last Q number to 1. In the block Q1 task wrong, we will set Q1 score to a sum of Q1 score and penalty. The block reset attributes will redirect to the block Q1 location question. In the block Q1 location hint 1, we will set attribute Q1 hint 1 shown to 1, and in the block Q1 location hint 2, we will set attribute Q1 hint 2 shown to 1. Now we have to make so that a user should, should get hints for the current question he, is, he or she is solving, and also a user should give the first hint, then the second hint, and should not be penalized more than once for each hint. For this we will need a, to create a hints router. It also will be the single entry point for getting hints for any place in the uh, flow. User should, user should be able to ask for a hint in two ways, via a persistent menu or by entering keywords like hint, give hint, etc. In both cases a special block will be called, uh, which will check which specific question is in play and present the corresponding hint. So we will create another group called hint answers rotor and there for now we will add an empty block called hints rotor now let's add persistent menu we will add a point get hint leading to hints rotor block block Let's set up some AI rules. We will add a group with several words like hint, need hint, get hint, help, get help, etc. Which will also redirect to hints router. So, and now we are, we are ready to construct the uh, rotor for hints. Uh, we will add a redirect card. It will check if attribute last Q number is 1 and attribute Q1 hint 1 shown is not 1. And in such a case it will redirect to Q1 location hint 1 block. If last Q number is 1, Q1 hint 1 shown attribute is 1 and Q2 
one hint two shown is not one, it will redirect to Q1 location hint two block. And the default redirect will be to hints finished block. We need to create it. In which we will add typing text. Unfortunately, there are no more hints in this task. Typing and uh, text. Let me remind that my last message was the following. Here in the next video we will add a dynamic redirect via a webhook. But for now we will temporary hard code redirect to Q1 task block. Now if on question 1 user is asking for a hint more than two times, we will redirect him or her to the last block he or she visited. Let's test this. As we need to start with reset attributes each time, we'll launch our bot from the block reset attributes. So, we added possibility for a user to get hints. Let's also make it possible for a user to get the answer at any time. In such case, user will get penalty score, which is equal to the number of minutes which will be devoted for a specific task. For example, if for the first question we devote 20 minutes, then penalty for opening the answer, preliminary will be 20 points. As in, the, in case of hints, user should be able to open the answer in two ways, from the persistent menu and by entering keywords. So actually, we've seen that uh, you probably won't be able to trigger it with a keyword, as conversation stops happen when a number is ex inputted is expected. But maybe we will get such cases further. Both these ways will trigger the same entry point, which will be block answers rotor in hints answers rotor group. So let's add such a block, empty for now. Now let's update persistent menu by adding the second point called with title get answer leading to answers rotor. And also let's go to setup AI and add, add another AI rule with words like answer, give answer, show answer, need answer, etc. leading to answers rotor. So we made the part that provides triggering answers rotor block. Before we fill this block, we need to set up several supporting blocks and attributes. Let's first go to the group one, Q1 and add a block Q1 lock force A. Forced opened answer to Q1 to question one. This block will be triggered by answers rotor when user is on task 1 and asks for an answer. So here we will add a card set user attribute, which will set several attributes. 
q, q1 answer shown to 1, q1 score equal to time for q1 minutes, q1 force a set to 1, and we will add a redirect to q1 location info block. Also, we need to update the block Q1 location info. It says that so now we so now we know that our co code starts from Q1 answer, which is 10. This copy is not uh, quite appropriate for the case when user failed to answer by himself or herself and opened the answer. So let's create additional block called q1 location info force a and there we will add typing text and the number was q1 answer and we will add a redirect to q1 and stop block so back to q1 location info block before the block saying so now we know it, uh, we will add a redirect to block card which will check if q1 force a is 1 and if so it will redirect to q1 location info force a block another thing needed for our answers rotor is a block which will be triggered if user already opened the answer. We will add this block in group hints answers rotor and we will call it dry. Don't repeat yourself. In this block we will add typing text. Don't be distracted, please. Typing text. Let me remind that my last message was the following and then we will have a call to our webhook to redirect to the last block. But for now, we will temporarily hard code redirect to Q1 task block. So, and finally, let's complete the answers rotor. We will add a redirect to block card, checking if last Q number is 1 and, and Q1 answer shown is not 1. It will redirect to Q1 location force A block. And if both these attributes are equal to 1, we will redirect to dry block. So now let's test retrieving their, their answer in the bot. So again, we will start from the reset attributes block. And the third thing we will do in this video, we will limit time for solving a question to some fixed period. For the first question, I decided to set this value to 20 minutes. So if a user fails to enter the correct number in 20 minutes, he or she should get the answer and penalty equal to number of minutes devoted to this question. For question 1, it's 20. For this, below group Q1, let's create a sequence called Q1 sec sequence and indicate that after 20 minutes a block called Q1 sec A answer should be called. First, in the group Q1, 
Let's create a block called Q1 location out auto A answer. And in the block Q1 sequence answer, let's add a redirect block to block card. In this block Q1 location auto A, we will add a card set user attribute, which will set Q1 A shown answer shown to 1, Q1 score equal to time for question 1 minutes and Q1 forced answer set to 1. We will add typing and text. Unfortunately, time... Unfortunately, uh, here we will have 20 minutes devoted to for solving this task finished. And then type in and so the answer to question 1 was and a redirect to Q1 location info. We also need to subscribe user to, to this sequence in the block Q1 location question and unsubscribe from it in cases where us, user correctly answered to the question this is Q1 task OK and if he or she preliminary opened the answer. This is Q1 location force A. Uh, to test this functionality, let's change the sequence time from 20 minutes to 30 seconds. So, we added some more advanced functionality on ChatFuel, no webhooks so far, which implements additional game rules such as retrieving hints, answer, and also limiting time for the task for a given period. In the next video we will focus, focus on webhooks. We will create a simple RESTful API using Express.js hosted on Glitch and this API will provide redirects to the last block which it will measure actual time user spends on the tasks and also provide image recognition using Google Cloud Vision API. So, see you in the next series.